Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Papa Boris, and I have some grave news. Every single video game in the world is a deck-building roguelike in early access. Seriously, I've played like three of them in the last three months, and now this is a fourth. Meteor Fall, Krumit's Tale. This game, however, is really, really special, whereas the previous deck-building roguelikes I've played in recent times ranged from dubious to pretty good. This one is probably going to be my very favorite game of 2020. It is a feast for game design enthusiasts like me. There's so much this game does right. So without further ado, let's go ahead and begin the quest. At the beginning of the game, you choose one of... Well, this is early access, so three right now, but eventually there will be at least four heroes. Let's go ahead and grab the first hero to be unlocked, Bruno the Fighter. Each hero has a very different starting deck, which I like about this game compared to other deck building roguelikes. There's almost like nothing that the heroes have in common. And every hero also starts with a perk, which in this game are called stamps, which I find quite quaint. Uh, starting stamp, which is like an ability unique to that hero. Now, the game has a pretty good tutorial, but we're not going to do the tutorial. you got something way better than, than a tutorial. You've got me, so let's go ahead and just jump right in. Now, every hero has a d starting deck of 12 cards. Cards in this game are called tiles. And your goal is to clear a series of nine increasingly difficult dungeons. They start off pretty easy. One, the first one's kind of trivial. The second one's pretty easy and then the third one starts to get quite challenging and then things get really crazy by the end so it's a nice design in that it doesn't make you spend a lot of time playing the easy stuff and it ramps up to the hard stuff quite fast now what makes this game quite unique is the fact that your 12 tiles are shuffled with the monsters in a particular dungeon to create a dungeon deck so this deck right here and you'll notice it has seven of my cards which are called tiles, and then three monsters, combined with the three monsters that are already on the board. And if you add up, you'll notice that there are um, six other tiles out here, which with these uh, create a total of 12. I think, I guess the chain mail, which is mine, does not count as one of these seven. Anywho, well, the point is that your starting tiles are shuffled with the monster tiles to create the deck, and the deck is then dealt out into a three by three grid. When you're in this area, there are several things that you can do. If you go to a monster, you can, of course, fight that monster. If you pick up one of your tiles, you can either discard it to get a gold and two health, or you can purchase it. The purchase cost of a tile is shown in the upper right-hand corner. They range from zero to very high numbers, although in the starting decks, typically, the price, the price ranges from zero to three. Every time you kill a monster, you gain a gold. So that's one way to get gold. Or of course, you can also discard tiles you don't need to gain a gold that way as well. Now let's talk about how combat works because you have to understand the way that combat works in order to understand what the heck these you know, tiles do and so on. Please note that in this video, I will not be playing optimally, not even remotely, because I'm trying to explain the rules. Um, but I will do a run with each of the heroes to illustrate some early gameplay and my early attempts at strategy. So when you fight a monster, you actually get to see what the monster is going to do. Over here on the left hand side, you can see the sequence of attacks the monsters will make. So this monster will make a fast attack for three damage. The diamond with a number in it means how much damage is being dealt. And then it's going to deal two damage, and then it's going to deal two damage, and it's going to go back around to the top and repeat this sequence. Not all monsters have a sequence of three. Some monsters have a sequence of just one. Some monsters have longer sequences. But I love how this game takes a page from Into the Breach because the predictability is just amazing game design. It allows the monsters to be more difficult, while at the same time letting the player be more powerful, while at the same time reducing randomness and increasing the skill, pack, skill cap of the game. So all in all, it's just incredibly smart and a really bold departure from other roguelikes, which all have some degree of randomness in what the monsters do. Now, your hero has first strike, which means that you attack first, unless the monster has this lightning bolt symbol, in which case the monster attack first. So when I click this attack button, the monster will hit me for three damage, then I will hit it for two. I hope that when the game is released, there is an auto attack button, which just like repeatedly attacks, so that you don't have to keep clicking. But now what's going to happen is I will attack the monster for two, and it will die before it can do this two damage to me. So I know that every single time I fight one of these guys, I'm going to end up taking three damage and killing it. Now let's talk about some other mechanics. I'm going to go ahead and just sell this short sword. And I'm going to sell this healing potion to make some money. And we're going to buy with our three gold a chain mail, which costs two gold and provides two block. And a bucket, which costs one gold and provides one block. 
Now, the way that items work in this game is that you have an inventory consisting of four spaces. This is not actually obvious at all when you start playing the game, but you're limited to holding only four tiles in your inventory, which is a very significant limitation. Items provide a variety of effects. I'm not going to explain all the different keywords and all the different items in this video, but, you know, I'll give you the basic rundown of how things work, and you can fill in the pieces if you buy the game and play it, or if you watch me play it, you'll see the other stuff like poison and, you know various random effects like thorns and freezing and all this sort of stuff. But some of the basic stuff is armor. What block does is it reduces the damage of each incoming attack by a block amount. Block is different from armor in this game. Armor is like in Hearthstone, which is just basically extra hit points on top of your hit points. Block is not expended. There are some monsters that will, for example, attack twice. It'll be like a diamond two and then another diamond two after it. That's two separate attacks, each doing two damage. This block two would block such an attack completely because the block reduces all incoming attacks by that value without being used up. Now, if I use both the chain mail and the bucket, I actually end up having block three because they're just added together. If you click on the tile again, you remove its effect. So you get to choose. So in addition to having the four inventory spaces, you also choose at any given moment whether to actually use the stuff that you have. The little white dots in the bottom left hand corner tell you how many times an item can be used before it is discarded. And obviously, you know, that's, that's kind of like the durability of the item. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually fully block this attack. If you fully block a monster's attack, then it is stunned and it essentially skips its next turn. It'll basically do nothing and then the action marker will will move to the next thing the monster does in some cases that is tactically very significant because you may want to time which of the monsters thing you want to get skipped over now in this case it's irrelevant that he's stunned because i was going to attack first anyway and kill it but that is an important mechanic in this game fully blocking an enemy gives you a free turn and cancels one of their things now i'm going to go ahead and uh, do this again same thing That uses up the second durability of my chainmail, and I could buy another chainmail and do it again. But just to show off the other mechanics, this chest just gives you two gold when acquired. It doesn't even go in your inventory. And now I'm gonna go ahead and buy a short sword and slash. Now, short swords are weapons. What weapons do is they add on to your damage. So if I use the short sword, I will do three damage instead of two. Your base attack, at least if you're this particular character, is two. So that's not going to make any difference, is it? Because if I do this, I'm going to take three damage and then kill him the next turn, but I was going to do it anyway, even if I use my base attack. So what I'm also going to do is this slash ability. The items all have this kind of like neutral slate colored background, whereas abilities have a variety of different colors of backgrounds. Now this one happens to be yellow. What it does is it increases the damage of your next attack by three and it's exhausted, meaning that it is trashed after being used. So I'm actually now going to do six damage because it's two for my basic attack, plus one for the short sword, plus three from the slash. But I'm not allowed to use the slash if I don't equip a weapon. So there's having an item in your inventory and quote unquote equipping it, which means actually deciding to use it and also use up one of its durabilities. Now, I, this is a stupid move, as you can probably tell, because I'm still taking three damage from this guy. And sure, I kill him in one hit, but I was gonna kill him on the next turn anyway without taking any damage, that was just a waste of stuff. Now, every character's stamps are very important. This one for Bruno, the fighter, is that whenever he gains armor, he also restores two health. So if I buy this chain mail, I actually get two health back. And now we can very easily kill off these guys. We can you know, either just take three damage per guy, or we can choose to block and avoid taking any damage at all. Now, at the end of a dungeon, you acquire 10 gems, plus five gems for every unused tile. So I'm gonna get an extra 20 gems because I had four tiles left over. Doesn't matter how many durability points are on the tiles, and it doesn't matter if the tile is in the deck, on the board, or in your inventory, Every unused tile gives you an additional five gems. So you get the 10 gems plus the unused tile bonus, and that's why what I did was really bad play. By using up tiles unnecessarily, I reduced how much of a bonus I was getting at the end of the, of the dungeon. You also get plus two to your deck size, 
And then you choose a reward. As far as I can tell, this is just like three things chosen at random. There are some cards that are common to all the classes, or at least multiple classes. There are some cards that are unique to a particular class. So here, I don't know if other classes besides Bruno the Warrior can get this. This is an ability that increases damage of all visible melee weapons by one, and you actually get to use it again by acquiring two weapons. This is a spear. It has, it has a whopping four damage. And it's piercing, meaning it goes through shields and armor. And this miner's hat is like chainmail, but it can be used an extra time. And it also gains a gold when you parry. Parry is the code word for uh, fully blocking an attack. And this is random, so it's not always going to be these three things. I'm not playing anymore in this video, so I'll just take something random and move on. Um, but, you know, obviously a big part of the strategy in this game is choosing which of those three rewards to take. Then you also get a selection of four random stamps, which are like perks. And you choose one. So after each dungeon, you get one of these, which means that your character gradually becomes stronger and stronger. And some of these get downright wacky and dramatically change how the run goes. So another big strategic element of the game is what stamps you choose. So I'm not going to talk about this too much because we're not playing anymore. But, you know, this one, you get two random abilities shuffled into the dungeon deck at the beginning of each dungeon, which is nifty. Then you get to see what's coming up next. You can click on the monsters to see what attacks they do and whether they have any special abilities. And you can go shopping. Now, the way it works is that you add two to your deck size. Oh, hang on a second. Am I wrong? I think I gave you guys wrong information. So my deck size is now 12, which means the starting deck must actually be 10. There must be 10 cards that you start with in your deck, and then you increase your deck size by two after each dungeon. So after your deck size increases by two, and then you collect that free treasure, you'll have one space left over in your deck to go shopping. The shop has six random things. You can see what all this stuff does, and each thing also costs a certain amount of gems. So I'm not exactly sure how it's decided what costs how many gems. Some good things are cheap on the gem front, and some things are expensive. But here I have just enough gems to buy one of these 25 gold things, uh, but I don't have enough to get this 40 gold thing. So I could, for example, get charged for 15 gems, which is an ability that does something or other, and it goes into my deck. Now, what I love about this game is that it slays a sacred cow of deck building, which is that in all deck building games stretching way back to over a decade ago when Dominion, the card game, first came out, having cards in your deck is not necessarily a good thing because having crap in your deck dilutes your deck and prevents you from doing what you want to do. This game fixes that problem by making all cards valuable. Every card at the very worst can just be pitched for two gold or for, for two health and one gold. So you never have to worry like you do in all the other deck building roguelikes, including the grand mech daddy of them all dream quest, about taking a card. You know, it's it's one of those things where like, yes, that is strategic, but at the same time it gets a bit tiresome, like, oh I have a choice of taking these two cards but do I want to buy any cards at all? In this game, you don't have to worry about that, and it's so nice and liberating just just be like, you know what? No, I, I just have a choice of cards, and I'll just choose the best of these, and I don't have to worry like about the side consideration of do I even want any cards at all to be added to my deck. So you never really want to like delete cards. You always want to have your maximum number of cards because cards are good. There's no way that having a good card in your deck can hurt you. Now, you may trash cards. When you trash a card, you get five gems for it. And what you can do with this is perhaps purchase more stuff. Here it's stupid because I don't have enough gems to buy any of the things that are on offer. So that would be bad gameplay right there. But there is an additional element of strategy kind of hidden away in this game, which is that if you do a good job having unspent tiles at the end of a dungeon, you can start to get rid of some of the chaff that's in your deck to start and purchase more than one thing from the shop. Now, the shop is random, so you might have crap in the shop or things that don't work well or don't go in your strategy or whatever, but it is something that you can do. So you can play the kind of quote-unquote simple game and just take your free treasure, buy one item, move on to the next dungeon, or you can start to do more advanced stuff and actually like sculpt your deck a little bit more. Okay, so if you want to see more strategy, more different enemy abilities, and see how the game actually progresses, stay tuned. I'll be posting some videos of that too. I do have a promise I made to myself, which is that I'm not going to do full playthroughs of games in early access, because what happens is then I love the game, I play it into the ground in early access, and I don't get to enjoy the full version when it's released. But I will do a run with each of the three classes currently in early access, and when the fourth comes out, I'll do one with that as well. But for now, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like and or subscribe, and I hope you'll stick around for some of the actual gameplay coming up soon. Take care.